So thank you, Adam, for asking me to come here and run my mouth a little. Thank you guys all for showing. Appreciate it. Um, so it's alt-right fascism. It's motives, methods, and foundations, right? So I'm going to talk a little bit about kind of what fascism is and, and what it is today in its modern manifestation, and then we're going to look at what it's been doing, all these attacks that have been going on over the last year. That's kind of what my video is. So uh, the first and singularly most important thing to understand about fascism is that it is less an ordered, formulaic, structured system for a flourishing society than it is a way that terrified reactionary people coalesce into a mass whose sole purpose is to protect them from all that they fear imagined or otherwise. Fascism is not some exhaustively constructed concept arrived at by some long process of rumination by experts of any kind looking to facilitate a societal construct that's beneficial to all. Fascism is the logical fruition of ignorant, powerless, terrified people being manipulated by powerful, terrified people. In short, Fascism is what astoundingly lazy, fearful people do in order to convince themselves they aren't astoundingly fearful, stupid, reactionary people without the inclination or wherewithal to understand the nature of all they fear. Instead, they want a strong man authority figure to say, trust me, follow me, I don't take no shit, and I ain't afraid of nothing. But more importantly, that authoritarian figure tells them, I can make all the complicated problems of the world seem like they have bumper sticker solutions. If only I had the proper authority to make my simple solutions happen. And we tend to call that person a fascist dictator. So long before the rises of now well-known fascist dictators such as Mussolini, Hitler, and Franco, the inevitability of these tyrants were predicted and even anticipated with immense accuracy by those that would come to be recognized as the first socialist. As the historic chapter on feudalism became glaringly evident it was reaching a close, the first capitalist began to emerge and gain power. It was the first socialist that recognized that this economic system would facilitate monopoly, first and foremost by way of the subjugation of the most adversely affected by that monopolistic inevitability. The first socialist understood that capitalism left to its unfettered devices would generate immense power for the few at the expense of the mass, and it would do so with as much violence and oppression as the human species can muster. It would thrive on manipulating our greatest fears and our need for the very simplest provisions to sustain the barest existence. And after recognizing with startling accuracy this inevitable reality, those socialists instantaneously began devising and even brought to fruition alternatives to the emerging power of the capitalists. In his book, We Don't Fear Anarchy, We Invoke It, Author Robert Graham tells us the following in relation to the activities of these early socialists and their response to the birth of the capitalists. He says, the capitalists were seen as completely undeserving of the profits they extracted from the often hard labor of the workers. As an alternative to capitalism, some French workers began to create networks of mutual aid societies and cooperatives that would exchange goods and services directly between themselves on the basis of the amount of labor contributed in order to achieve the kind of equivalent exchange that Proudhon had also been advocating. Now, Pierre Joseph Proudhon was of course a contemporary of even somewhat of a mentor or at the very least inspiration to Marx. Um, Proudhon was most noted for the declaration of property as theft, the veracity of which I won't be deconstructing at this point. But Graham goes on to write, as with other skilled workers, Proudhon could see that industrialization was making many of them redundant, subjugating them to factory discipline and rote work, and reducing them to poverty. Modern industry was creating both overproduction and destitution. No matter how great the pace of mechanical progress, Proudhon observed, the ultimate effect was to, quote unquote, make the chains of serfdom heavier, render life more and more expensive, and deepen the abyss which separates the class that commands and enjoys from the class that obeys and suffers. Now this dynamic understood, it's safe to assume that the masses, once they realize the reality of their dirt level status on the dramatically stratified social stratum, are likely to become resentful, even angry. They might begin to consider an uprising or even, dare I say, a revolution. <laughs> 
but the most successful of the capitalists also understand this inevitability. So they must take measures to ensure their power once the exploitation gag is out of the bag. They can do this in two ways. One, brutally and violently, or the second and most advantageous current method is to manipulate the most ignorant and oftentimes most adversely affected, those rote workers Graham spoke of, into believing that it's not the wealthy capitalist's fault. No, it's the immigrant's fault you lost your job at the plant. Or it's those Muslim terrorists making our economy the dog shit mess that it is. And most importantly, this authoritarian figure and all his wealthy capitalist backers are the only ones that can save you from this misery. So an important thing to understand about fascism, as alluded to already, and I think that this rings true in all its historic manifestations, is there are essentially two kinds of fascists. There are the twisted, self-obsessed maniacs who are pur purposeful and knowing fascists, and there are the astoundingly ignorant, easily manipulated people who follow them. With that said, these two factions' roles, while symbiotic, differ starkly from one another. I'm reminded of Voltaire, who said, those that make you believe absurdities can make you commit atrocities. Mm. The true fascists of today, the ones consciously plotting the tone of the narratives that will then get disseminated down to the most terrifyingly ignorant and often poorest of our monstrously stratified society, manage to stumble on a fairly sensible, if not even incredibly effective approach to facilitating the mission of manipulating and exploiting the masses. They became almost masters at subverting the pop culture dialogue and ultimately co-opting the phrasing and historically affected methodology we had previously used to subvert fascist narratives in the past. The current fascists became rather adept at either averting or ultimately appropriating our, meaning the historic left's, traditional methods and approaches of effective organizing in defense against tyranny. The most obvious example of blatant subversion being that verifiable sources no longer hold relevance. Trump gave the most uninformed and angry members of our society license to be feverishly proud of their stupidity. He gave them the words, fake news. Right? And quite possibly the most frustrating example of their modern methodology, though, has been the many ways with which they managed to appropriate much of the historically righteous and even oftentimes effective messaging, narratives, slogans, rallying cries, etc., that have been much of the cornerstones of historically righteous human rights struggles against power. The alt-right spurious and frankly offensive appropriation of the free speech movement being the most obvious example. I personally had the opportunity to read from the steps of Sproul Hall, words first spoken there by Mario Savio during the most pivotal and even furious moment in the advancement of the original free speech movement. And as I read those words by Mario, I was shouted over by a choir of MAGA hat sporting American flag waving patriots singing We Shall Overcome. These very same knuckle noggin brainiacs who were obstructing the words of Mario Savi, Savio had sold their fascist onslaught on Berkeley University to the university, sorry, <laughs> not Berkeley University, I could have that. <laughs> uh, but they had sold this onslaught um, to the university on the legacy of Mario Savio and the free speech movement. And here they were, shouting down the words of the very man they had exploited to secure their fascist assault on campus. And that brings me to our first video. I'm going to show you the video of that. And 
14th Amendment. Mario Savio, October 16th, 1964, right here. Is another video, and this one's a little longer, it's about 30 minutes. And what this is, is it's an overview of this last year. It's kind of a highlights reel, it's kind of got a lot of me in it because this is my presentation. <laughs> but um, it, it, it's got a bunch of different stuff from when Ben Shapiro was here, when Milo was here, a number of the attacks on Revolution books. And um, so let's go ahead and watch this, and then I'll I have a little conclusion to do after. Guys, we're out here, we're exposing communism at the best way possible by confronting them where they hang out, where they get their ideologies off, where they indoctrinate our youth. When we walk in to the places that they hang out, that's where they're most comfortable. That's where they feel the most safe. There are no more safe spaces for communists. There are no more safe spaces for communists. We are out here exposing communists in Berkeley, exposing people here who are pressing free speech. We're sick of it. We're tired of it. We're out here doing our job. We're making sure that communism does not spread in the United States. Said there were those very fine people on the side of those torch-bearing white supremacists in Charlottesville. Donald Trump is a motherfucking fascist, and we're out here to call out his whole regime and all their little intellectual operatives and their fascist stormtroopers that are targeting Berkeley. These dope people don't give a damn about free speech. They don't give a damn about Colin. I want to go to the right. People are looking like a hot Tito. You are part of that. You're, you're aligned with them. As are the Proud Boys. The Proud Boys, Wise Above Women, Identity the Proud Boys. All believe that black people are genetically inferior to white people. This is genetic fact. Okay, so on the record, right here, right here, right now, right here, right now, right here, right now, right right now on the record, denounce the idea that black people are genetically inferior intellectually to white people. Denounce it right now. It's crazy. I just denounce it right now.
to that specifically. To that black people, the idea that black people are genetically inferior to white people. How is that not supremacy? Why is it not? He can't do it. I'm saying, I'm asking you to denounce that idea right now. Say to everyone here that black people are not genetically inferior to white people. They are not genetically inferior to white people. It's easy to say. Say it, man. It's easy. Black people are not genetically inferior to white people. I just said it. It was easy. You can't say it. You can't say it. You're a bigot, man. You're a bigot, dude. Because you don't believe it. Because you're a bigot. Nah, you're a bigot. You're a bigot, man. You think black people are genetically inferior to you. You're a bigot. You do. You do, and that's why you want to denounce it. You have been outed as a neo-Nazi. He will straight up, renounce, straight up, yeah, proud boy. Black people are genetically inferior intellectually to white people. He is a neo-Nazi. He will not <laughs> renounce the rap. Why is the pop voted? Why? Because he's a neo-Nazi. He right. plays games with them. He's right. a nice little front for the proud boys identity in Europa and why is the pop voted? Neo-Nazi, far right, racist organization. Fuck. You! I outed you, motherfucker, for the world to see! Yes, you did! Thank you, brother! Thank you! Johnny Benitez. Benitez. Because anti is a terrorist organization. That's nonsense. You won't even accept the white supremacists that have been going along with your rallies with proud boys. Proud boys were anti-racist. But he did, and, and he did, and he did, and he but kicked everybody that was out. That is an acknowledgement that from the start that happened. All I wanted to do yeah, was and to he, say. He got rid of it. He's an anti terrorist organization. organization. Would you tear down a clan? Like that a is clan? according to you, not all of them. No, 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 no. I know I saw a lot of but I know Antifa, and I saw a terrorist. What did Cornell West say? Did you hear what Cornell West said about Antifa? Did you? No, I haven't. He said, quote unquote, if it had not been for anarchists and Antifa, I would have been squashed like a cockroach. He went on to say, Antifa and anarchists saved my life, and I will never forget it. That's Cornell West, man. That's your point. Let me let me ask. So calling them terrorists is ridiculous. Let me let me answer it this way. Pablo Escobar killed thousands of people, but there are people that love him because he bought houses. Doing a nice thing doesn't take away doing bad things. Where is an instance of actual murder and terror inflicted by anti? I was here too. Too, man, and they your side brutalized a shit ton of people as well. Yeah, after you guys started, it was a two. No, they didn't. Are, are, are no, the denying, cops you, started no, 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 it. Are you denying? Uh, listen, that listen, listen. This is my let take me, on it. My I say the cops point. started it. I say the cops put up that orange barrier right there, and they lined up in the middle. And, 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 and Antifa, check it out. And Antifa gathered up on the black, black gathered over there. You guys all gathered over here, and we screamed and yelled at each other. And when it got to that heated point, the cops split. And the two who, crowds went who, at each other. There broke, is no one person who, who started it. Who cut the barricades? Both sides. No. Both sides. I have video of both sides did it. We have video. I know you do. Antifa did it. Antifa broke sides and there were people masked up that committed violence that day. Okay? But so did your side. So did your side. And then the, the other guys jumped on the other barrier. Right. Attacked, so. And it was right it, right here. They shot off a big flashbang right yep. here. And everyone was gathered right here. Yep. And then that's, you saw the cops. They went, and they split off down that way and that way. And then it was all out fucking chaos all the way around the block. Pushing a trash can and fighting each other for fucking six hours. You got to accept, man, there's a lot of people on your side that are foul, fucked up people. You may, I think you're kind of waking up a little bit, but your movement is rooted in hatred, man. No, it's not. And it's, in, yes, it is, man. I know you say it's not, and I know you genuinely don't believe that, but it is. And all of us, that's all we hear from you guys. That's it. You, we don't hear your message at all. All we hear is how angry and hateful you are. We're That's all. Either. Then change your fucking message somehow. And you don't have one because when I asked you, all you said was you're worried about illegal immigration, dude. That People is. in this country are suffering under capitalism. People of color in their communities and LGBT why, community why? are abused and suffering every okay. single day here, and you're worried about immigrants. Okay, so let me have my talking point then. You say that, right? Right. If, if capitalism is so, and, and that's what we're about, why are the capitalists, supposedly, these big businesses like agribusiness, why are they lobbying to bring these people in if we're all part of one big thing and they hate immigrants? Because I, 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 would, I, would I would say because that's, it, it, it bolsters the division narrative. 
it keeps us divided. No, it's because they yes. pay them like they exploit it. That's the nature of what capitalism does and its defense mechanism, fascism. And what it does is it divides people. It finds already pre-existing divisions and exploits them. And that's what's going on with this whole immigration issue, man. D borders don't exist. Gibson just arrived five minutes after Antifa took the park. down on Western culture. It's happening in the halls of power, and it's being backed up by thugs on the street. But there's a reason I'm joyful, because I am staring at the pages of history. Know that for sure. This is the pivotal, singular, most important struggle 
of this time. This is it. History has thrust itself on us. And you have answered the call. I've been coming out here for all these things since Milo and the struggles in MLK Park. And each time there's more of you here. And you need to give yourself credit for that. Because when you come out here and stand here, your friends want to know why you went and stood out here today. And then you have the opportunity to tell them why. And then they will come with you next time. There's a reason I'm here, okay? I'm just a weird old man and an old punk rocker. That's where I am, okay? But I remember in the 80s and the 90s, the Nazi skinheads that beat the piss out of me and my friends. And I remember the things that they said. We don't hate minorities. We just want a place for us. It's the same garbage they're saying now. Exactly word for word. And it fooled us when they carted it out this time. Because they weren't wearing bomber jackets and Doc Martens with bald heads going like this. They said, no, we're just Trump supporters. We just want to practice our free speech. And I saw their free speech in Charlottesville when they murdered Heather Heyer. That is the end result of their free speech. But I'm joyful because I'm standing with you. We can be joyful with each other. Our whole struggle doesn't have to be about being against. We can be against, but we can do it together. And everyone is welcome to join us. You will be welcomed with open arms because this is the pivotal moment. Fascism is about to take over Western culture. It is poised to become consistent and unbroken for the rest of history. It fooled us when Hitler and Mussolini and Franco came to power. But you're not fooled this time, are you? You're not fooled this time. Are you against fascism? You are Antifa. You are. You are Antifa. And if you don't like the things that you see on the news, the Black Bloc does, and some of the things that Antifa does, there's a way to make sure they don't have to do that. This. This is what you keep doing. This is how you make sure that this is a non-violent resistance to fascism. We outnumber them in the millions. You need to come out in the street and prove it. And you are. And I love you and adore you for it. Thank you. My heart is with you. We are going to win. And this will be the last time humanity has to fight against fascism. And you will have done it. Thank you. Okay, we're live. We're about to go uh, expose this communist bookstore right now. We're back, we're back, we're still in Berkeley. Hey, what's up guys? Steven here with Folklore Americana. I'm about to go off with Tony over here, Tony Foreman. I'm sure you all know who he is. We're gonna expose this communist bookstore. We went into it earlier, they, they didn't let us in. So right now we're just gonna go walk in. There's Tony right here. We're gonna get in there, guys. Don't worry about it. We're gonna get in there. Just keep watching. All right. So this is it. This is about Falarka's hideout right here. Hey, 
Don't touch me. Don't touch me. Don't touch anybody. Don't touch anybody. I want to know about communist talk. I want to know about communist talk. Are you wrong? This is a public establishment. What did you want to touch us? What did you want to touch us? What did you want to touch us? Get out! Get out! Am I not able to learn about communism here? Get out! Get out! Get out! I do want to learn about communism. Get out! Get out! No KKK! No fascist USA! Get the fuck out! Get out! No, guys, this is the face of communism. This is communism, guys. Infowars.com. This is communism. This is communism. This is We're just trying to buy a book. Hands up, hands up, don't shoot. 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 Why are you assaulting him? Get out of here. Why are you assaulting him? Because we don't want him in here. Why are you assaulting him? We don't want him in here. See, they're assaulting him. We don't want him in here. See, they're assaulting him. Get out of our store. Why are you assaulting him? Get out of our store. This is a public store. Discrimination. I don't want to get assaulted. Get out of our store. This is discrimination. Get out of our store. Discrimination right here. Get out. Close the door. Close the door. Hey. Close the door. You commies are murderers. Murders! Oh, 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 100 million! 100 million murders! 100 million murders! Yeah, baby! That's how we expose communists in this country. We go right into their bookstores, we expose them at all costs, we don't give a fuck, man. We're going into your bookstores, we're gonna confront you, we're gonna get in your fucking face. I'm sick of communism in this country, man. We're gonna do it. Millie Weaver reporting for Infowars.com. We are here at UC Berkeley where some students are holding a stand against white supremacy rally here. Now, you can bet your butt that Antifa, by any means necessary, and many other alt-left radical terrorist groups are going to be here marching today. And we're just going to go ahead and, and talk to them. Now, we can see that there are is police presence here but the police are kind of just surrounding the area kind of um sporadically standing around and then we have the majority of the people all gathered up over here so let's go see let's go talk to some of these people it is Did you know that the Trump administration has the highest attendee of Bilderberg attendees of any administration. What's do you know that, that Alex? What's that have to do with us being here? Because yeah. your info war is that? spent years but what is that? Bilderberg, but he sold out. You sold out, Alex. Trump has the largest showing of Bilderberg attendees of any what presidential administration because here, it shows that Alex is a sellout. But you were just talking about how you were laughing. You were just talking about how you were laughing about myself, bro. Individual. All right, let's go. Come iPhone? on. Do I have an iPhone? No, I don't use iPhones. So, so you don't support. How fun working so for a sellout? How fun working for a sellout? Right, okay. Sell out, Alex, and you're a traitor because you managed Alex. <laughs> okay. So you don't you're support. You don't support Alex. free speech, do you? Information agent. Okay. You don't support free speech, do I'm you? Practicing it. Okay, but you're I'm laughing. No, you're I'm laughing that these people are trying to stop me. It. Because your boss is a sellout. You can say whatever your you boss want. Is a sellout. You can say whatever your you boss want. Boss is a sellout. He got called out by Jesse on his own, by Jesse Ventura of all people on his own damn show. You're right. such a sellout, Alex. Okay, okay. Have that's fun. your opinion Have to fun. exercise your Have First fun. Amendment. A tool for the elite, Infowars. Right. Have fun, you sellout. A a tool for the elite. Give me a break. Yeah, Give me a break. That's not elite. even true. Oh, okay. So, I, so I, you know I assume it, you would have wanted you Hillary in, Alex. right? You sold out at the beginning of the fucking election cycle. You know you did. So you wanted Hillary Clinton, right? No, Hillary is a fucking 
No. Right, Fuck on. the Democrats. So you don't want Fuck anyone. Let me guess. You want communism by, no, by your clothes. No. no, I'm an anarchist, you moron. Okay, so you don't want any no, government. You want no, anarchy. Spell out, Alex. Tell the truth, dude. Where's all your fucking railing against the elites and Bilderberg and shit anymore? Why aren't you railing against so fucking Goldman Sachs, basically you don't Sachs, have a real Alex? solution. Why aren't you railing against Goldman Sachs, Alex? You don't have a real Hold solution. Out, Anarchy is not a real solution. Out, a the reality... Okay. <laughs> I at least appreciate you being willing but, to talk with us. Yeah. Even we may not agree, at least you're willing to talk yeah. with us. Yeah, at least you can but talk, I and yeah, I mean, I and you're not trying to block us from moving around and talking, no. so I appreciate that, but thank I, you. I, I enjoy watching people do that to you. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's fine, Wait, you, can be, well, you can be a sadist you all awful. you want. You guys are, you, what you do is awful. Can you give me you, you gin up so much ignorance. Give us an like, example. <laughs> Pizza Gate, dude. Pizza Gate. Give me a break. But how's that hurting any of these people to talk okay, about so the fact that there could that be that child sex that trafficking? That's an isolated example that results from Alex Jones's rhetoric. You just gave you that asked example. Me for one, so I gave it to you. But you don't want to see how that connects to a larger, broader impact that he has on society. So you deny the fact that there could be elite pedophile groups oh, no, that are trafficking are children. Me? So elites have been fucking in weird ways throughout human history. I mean, Caligula, thank you very much. So then what's no, so wrong not. about talking about those instances? There, I didn't say there was. Pizzagate was disgusting, and Alex, you knew it was wrong when you brought it in. He was, every, there were other groups pushing Pizzagate originally. No, it, no, we're not. No, he... I saw his goddamn videos. You're a liar. You're no, a liar. he You're talked liar. about it, but it was after other people oh, were originally pushing it. Oh, okay. okay. He addressed Talk it. About the fucking red pill. You're talking about Pizzagate right now. How's it any different than oh, him talking okay, so about because it? Because I say that yourself. word in response to your misinformation on it, I'm somehow spreading misinformation and I'm contributing by calling out what a dangerous impact you have on society, right. Alex. Okay. Fuck off. All right. I'm a racist because I support our president of this United States of America. Um, yes, basically, yes. You are so ignorant. That is the worst. Yeah, give me a good reason. You're commie scum. We're reason. gonna burn down your bookstore. You know give me that. a good reason. Okay, we have you on recorded that you say you're gonna burn down our bookstore. The march is judgmental pieces of shit. You can't tell us how to live. This is America. Please leave now. This is America. You. This is a public thing. Why don't you go in there and start Please leave now. You're not allowed in our store. I already go said now. no. I'm not going in your store. So get the out of my face. And this motherfucker wants to fucking do it. Yeah, you motherfuckers. I was here March 4th, April 15th, April 27th. We ran your stupid asses out of the fucking Berkeley. Trump is going to get rid of all you pieces of shit. You know that? F*** all you anti-American hey, you know pieces what? Your genocide is coming. Your genocide is coming. They're half to say, make America great again. Hell yeah. And you can tell that what this really means is make America white again. Uh, you're the one that f***ing buy it. Hey, Revolution Books, the only people that f***ing come here to buy this are a team of pieces of shit. Oh, I was just showing. I we were we parked and we were walking past it. Literally, we were walking past oh, you, you it. You didn't noticed. already preconceived to come here, though. You just I actually happened didn't. To stumble I, upon we the, did on actually. The books, will didn't would we? you not be here if it wasn't for pay, for Joey Gibson today? Call no, today. no, we, we were you actually. You would just happen to have been out here with your camera. You would have been out here with your camera, whether Joey Gibson had an event I've today never, or not. I've, I, do, I do not do any events with Joey Gibson. We were out here with the veterans this morning. But you're here because Joey Gibson no, is having no, an event. No, you would have been filming with this camera today in Berkeley where yes. Joey Gibson We were had already an event. here. Yes. I'm you're I was just no, it's true. The only difference listen, listen, between communists and fascists <laughs> is who's in power. Okay. They're both no, no, dictators. No, 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 that's absolutely not it isn't. true. No, it's it is not once true. No, that's not true. It is. It's a complete it's misunderstanding. Nazis were leftist fascists. Communists were were no, yes. no, actually Nazis were far right fascists. No, they were leftists. 
They were leftists. They were socialists. What is the Nazi? So, so Nazi let me ask you this. It's a national, ask, so, wait, national this socialist that, party. Wait, wait, let's go over here. Yeah. Do you buy into this notion that Hitler was what a is, socialist? Do you? Do you believe that? Do you he, believe that what Hitler did was Nazi a stand for? It was a national right, right. socialist you, party. Do you also know that if you what read did Nazi stand for? I know for? what it stands for. I know so what it stands you're for. saying he wasn't what he said he no, was. No, he was an uh, 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 excellent propagandist who tried to co-opt the imagery. He tried to co-opt the imagery and the language of the left to sell far-right, fascist, pro-capitalist, anti-Marxist no, ideas. Yes, he, was total, he, was, he was a total. He was a big Kampf. government. He was a big Kampf, government if, socialist. He was a big was government. Not. So he was. He had. He had. He had government housing. He had government housing. He had government housing. He was a socialist. It's National Socialist Party. That's what it's called. Yeah. Did you, so you don't. So okay. so you, you know, call yourselves communists. North Korea is the People's Democratic Republic of North Korea. Do you think North Korea is a democratic republic? No, they're a communist. Okay, nation. so the same notion. They're communist dictators. Listen, if you read Mein Kampf. He is adamantly anti-Marxist all through it, and virulently yeah, anti-communist. He was anti-communist, anti-Marxist. Yeah, yes. I, yeah. Hitler was an anti-Marxist. So how is that? A, how could he possibly be socialist? He was a big Marx government is socialist. The first progenitor. He supported. He supported Marx big is government. the first progenitor of socialist ideology. And if Hitler was virulently anti-Marxist, how could he possibly be? I'm just saying his policies. What his I'm policies were you, big government. What I'm saying is the things that you think you understand about the, these ideologies you have no foundation for and yeah. you're wrong. No. You don't know anything, dude. I don't know anything. You don't, you don't know no. anything he was a so, you He was a big government a leftist socialist, socialist. Name me a prominent socialist writer that's not Karl Marx or Engels. Name me one. I'm not, I'm not playing so on your battlefield. Read. I'm not playing on your battlefield. I know battlefield. you're not. No. My battlefield Com is well read name, with an name understanding one, of the name ideologies Name me one I'm successful on. communist nation. <laughs> Name me one example. I'm not here to defend communism. I'm here I'm to asking you, you I'm asking you. You I'm support a bookstore. Communism is great. You're a book, I'm here you to support tell a bookstore you that you don't that know support, what it is. No, you support a bookstore that says communism is great. Communism is great. No, I support friends who are being repeatedly attacked by no, fascists. No, no, no. You support communism. I'm an anarchist. Be honest. Now you're, now you're lying. Now you're lying. Now you're lying. You're saying you're not a pro-communist. We've already established that. I don't you're, now you're lying. We've already established. You might be. I don't know. But now, know your but now you're lying. What makes, what makes you won't admit. You won't admit that you I, support I communism. Say you were. I said you might be. I don't know your beliefs. Is he a fascist? Let's, let's I, don't I don't know. I don't know his beliefs. Fascist, not your look. Yeah. So okay, the problem. Is name me. Name me one. I stand. So that was you're trying so to multiple, trap him. The so reason why I bring that up. The reason why I bring that up because every time the point is you can't you can't you can't give me one example of a of a successful communist. You defend communism. I'm an anarchist. You're you're defending. There's that crazy guy. You're defending a communist bookstore. I'm defending my friends. Okay. Who some happen to be communists. Okay. But I'm just asking you. Is there a successful communist? I'm not going to have that argument. Okay. If you can tell me. Is there more? If you can give me a nuanced critique and understanding of what socialism is, I'll have that conversation. With you. I can't but you can't. I can't so there's so right. many levels and upon which you will not be able to comprehend what I'm talking yeah, about because you, you, <laughs> yeah, you haven't done your homework. Yeah. 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 Educate me. Really? So yeah. educate me. You want me to spew volumes whatever, of whatever, literature on you so that you understand? <laughs> not today. Not today. Right. Not today. We tried. So you'll let me buy a book in there? That's not up to me. Oh, okay. I'm just a dude on the street, bro. I just I just want to go in there and buy a book. He asked you a question. Because you know what? You Go to Moe's and buy a book. You probably get every book they have. I don't know what you are until you. Hey, Will, you want to you want to roll? You asked him a question. No, no, no. I'm just. All right. I'm just asking. All right, guys. It all we're here in Berkeley. Back. We stopped by the communist bookstore. I did have a conversation. What was what was your name again? Hey, I appreciate you actually talking though. Most people won't. What was your name again? Reverend Aaron. Reverend Aaron. Ben Burkwam. That's good. Shaking hands. Yep. Yeah. No. I, hey, I'll talk to anybody. I will talk to anybody. I have no problem with it. The, the problem with the left is they don't want to have, most of them don't want to have conversations. Reverend Aaron was willing to have a conversation. He was a what little, I don't know. Yeah, that's a good question. Reverend, uh, Re yeah, I know. Reverend Aaron. I'm Reverend, I'm Reverend Burkwam. I think they're over. Guys, sorry, guys, if you're watching, uh, we're trying to look link up. Now, he's, now he totally thinks we're liars because we're going to link up with Joey Gibson. <laughs> conclusion to the presentation and then one more fun little short video um, and then I'd be happy to answer any questions about anything if anybody has any so engaging in dialogue let alone debate with members of the alt-right is as many have already deduced 
usually a massive waste of precious time. But sometimes, if you can control the tone of the narrative and avoid being put on the defensive, I obviously believe such dialogue can be fruitful. But the far right, those that would still take to the streets or even just social media in favor of the Trump regime, especially at this point in the game, are far too entrenched in either their misinformed, ignorant, conspiratorial worldviews, or they are just outright proud bigots invigorated by all that the regime has done that the rest of humanity finds abhorrent. And all that being said, our focus for fruitful dialogue should rather be directed on the less radicalized members of the left. Those that parrot nonsensical narratives such as the violent response from the black bloc to the fascists is the same as the fascists, right? Or violence is just being fascist. And a favorite for all of us, Antifa is the real fascist. Now these narratives, aside from being traced directly back to far-right neo-Nazi online forums, are obviously misinterpretations of not only the nature of the responses from Black Bloc and other militant anti-fascist groups, especially in terms of defining what is or isn't actually violence, but in terms of the very definition of fascism, fascism itself. Apparently there are masses of people who need a refresher on its literal definition. Or, maybe more specifically, people need not only refreshers, but up-to-date descriptions of the ways with which fascism adapts to its contemporary social climate. So anarchists, socialists, and communists alike will today describe fascism as the evidence of capitalism in crisis. It is the last desperate, strong-armed defense tactic of the massive mechanisms, bureaucracies, <clears throat> and armed military policing bodies of capitalism brought to bear on any and all that threaten its reign of oppression of the many for the benefit of an increasingly decreasing few. But the manifestation of the fascist expression of capitalism in crisis is seen by anarchists, socialists, and communists alike, or it should be, as an opportunity. That is to say that if fascism has been forced to play its hand, one could logically deduce that capitalism is therefore vulnerable. Anarchists and communists can therefore be seen, if I might risk a seemingly derogatory analogy, like sharks circling around a wounded and bleeding prey. They see their opportunity to dismantle and undo all the focus of their ire and criticism, the machinations of our oppression, the greatest purveyor of misery and murder in the 21st century, capitalism. But, contrarily, that fascist strong arm manifestation of capitalism is vicious. It uses neither logic nor compassion, only a blind, desperate hatred for its own sense of misinformed desperation and anything it perceives as the cause of it. It knows not good sense, only a blind hatred, and an unwavering commitment to the utter destruction of anyone and everyone it perceives to be even a modicum of threat to its absolute and utter domination. The common thread of sloganing all throughout the many manifestations of fascism is a deep and visceral loathing and hatred for communism and anarchism. Chants of kill the commies and red scum off our streets have been prevalent at, and at the fore of every fascist manifestation over history. Make no mistake, we are in a cyclical pattern of the vicious oppression of capitalism versus the universal freedom of socialism. And as I tap these keys, Capitalism knows, in the wake of the 20, 2008 financial crisis in the U.S., the numerous battles over austerity all throughout Europe, the rise of authoritarian and nationalist figures like Le Pen, Duterte, Erdogan, Trump, etc., the state of peaking oil all over the globe, the cornerstone foundation of our globalized economy, the hashtag MeToo movement and the women's marches, the student walkouts and the teacher strikes, the complete disregard for the future of the very planet we live on and the awakening of so many of the masses to that reality. With these and numerous other contributing factors and evidences, as I said, make no mistake, capitalism knows it's in trouble and authoritarian fascism has naturally and organically manifested once again to protect it. So I'm going to leave you with a quote from Enrico Malatista and then I have a short little fun video to play and then I'll answer any questions. So uh, Enrico Malatista says, the slave is always in a state of legitimate defense and consequently his violence against the boss, against the oppressor, is always morally justifiable and must be controlled only by such considerations as that the best 
and most economical use is being made of human effort and human sufferings. Thanks, guys. Um, so this uh, video here is um, also from out in front of Revolution Books. After a Joey Gibson Patriot Prayer event in Berkeley in People's Park, where he said, um, where he told his crowd that there's a communist bookstore in this town, and as far as I'm concerned, a communist bookstore is the same thing as a Nazi bookstore. And then it's weird, coincidentally enough, that entire mob went over to Revolution Books and started screaming and yelling and harassing them. And they decided to sing the national anthem, and I sang along with them. <laughs> and so this is called Reverend Aaron and the Moron Fascist Choir. So we do, we have a YouTube channel, Punks for Progress, and um, literally, I have, I have live streamed from every one of these things over the last year or so, and, um, and there's extended versions of a lot of the video stuff you saw in those videos, and um, we are under attack from the alt-right on our channel right now. Um, mm -hmm. I did a video about a month, a little over a month ago, called um, Proud Boys, um, A Violence-Obsessed Gang of Women Beaters Exposed. I um, found two videos put out by um, Alt-Right channel and um, showing them um, going to a Planned Parenthood event in Portland and just beating the crap out of like five or six women. And in their video, they, they, uh, the title of it is something to the effect of Antifa sent running after confronting Alt-Right. Now I watch that video and what I see is these guys show up and assault these people and beat them. But their followers watch the same exact video I did and see Antifa getting, you know, starting it and then getting beat down in triumph. So I just took that video and then another video at another Patriot Prayer event in um, Seattle where um, after the event, Tiny Tutos and a few other people beat the crap out of a bunch of girls. And it's the same thing, this video of like, I look at it and I see, an unprovoked assault on women and they post it and go look at how we defended ourselves and all the comments are like yeah you showed them and I'm going dude that's video of you proud boys beating up a woman who's like this big you know and then so I took those two videos and then found um, a video of Gavin McGinnis who formed the proud boys 
explaining why he formed the Proud Boys and what it was and what it's all about. And in that video, it's just clear that it's completely rooted in violence. I didn't have to twist his words at all. He gives two examples of him assaulting people unprovoked and talking about how good it feels to beat on people. He's like, you know, he says justified violence feels great. You know, and, um, and he talks about, and they're all weak people. They're weak, weak little mama's boys who've been placated by Obama. So, but you take joy out of beating on people weaker than you. So I just had to put that in this video, right? So I put this video up, put in some great um, female punk rock artists like Alice Bag and X-Ray Specs and the Selectors, so these strong female voices all throughout it, and it pissed them off. It really pissed them off, and they attacked our channel big time. So what they've been doing is complaining on all our videos, saying that they have inappropriate content or hate speech. And right now we have two videos that have been blocked the video I put together for Revolution Books mm -hmm. that has the people saying, you know, after the threat to burn it down, and then people came in and said, we support Revolution right. Books, and I put all those in, mm -hmm. that's blocked on our channel. Mm -hmm. And then yesterday we got another video blocked for inappropriate content, and, but they don't tell us what's inappropriate about it. Mm -hmm. Now because we've had two videos that were blocked within a month, mm -hmm. YouTube has now said we can't upload new content for two weeks. They're uh, having, I'm going through email exchanges with them. They've admitted that the videos were brought down due to complaints and they haven't looked at them. But told me that it's, in, but also in the same email told me it's impossible videos don't get down because, taken down because of complaints. So I'm going through some shit with them. But you know, there's a lot of content on that channel that makes them angry. So I kind of feel good about going through this. You know, it's like we're doing something right. You know? That's interesting. I'm glad you're there. Thanks for oh, thank doing you. that. I'll go look for you. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah. They come out. See, they came with the American flags and the, you know, they had all these cameras. Like, they always have the money behind them. But they all got these cameras coming at you. Right. You know, and so they at least had some footage of Michael Delacour and Andrea Pritchett. You know, Michael Delacour has been a big part of People's Park and Andrea Pritchett. So they were, you know, we were suggesting that, okay, check it out. <laughs> you know, or they didn't put me because I guess they figured out I was a little, because I was actually get somewhere with them. <laughs> like, or because I'm used to dealing with that, you know, the Nazis, or like how do you flip them, you know? Or, but then we noticed they edited that out. And, and, because we were t telling people to check it out. <gasps> yeah, no, they, I, I, and, you know, and then, you know, basically what they had, it got down to like, they had some people like, what are we doing here? There's a bunch of losers here, poor people, yeah. you know. But, you know, what happened, because I was very adamant to the cops, so like, I want you to stay out of it, stay out of the park, because we're going to take care of it, because I'd be connecting, like, when the police are doing the militarized thing, that's playing into the fascists. That's what the fascists want. They want police state, right? Okay. So I was very adamant, like, stay out of it. They, they, they were outside of the park, but that's where, you know, I didn't want them to get involved with it, you know. And I was like, you know, this is free speech. It's a free speech state. And if you don't like the University of California, we don't either. <laughs> <laughs> so some things in common, okay? But, you know, or, but, you know, it's just, they just decided, you know, because they fenced off Civic Center, and some people, to, you know, because we're watching, you know, that's funny when I knew they were going to come to the park, I said, I'm going to find out more about these people and all that. So it's kind of like, how do we, like, but, you know, there was a transgender woman there. And I was like, you know, they were like, where's your picture? It's Veterans Day, you know, because a lot of them are like, butts down from Washington, California. Because I was thinking Trump people, Working class people that did, got, but these are like you know, no. There's money behind him. So we they're like not uh, working class no, at all. No, no. Uh, well, I mean, th yeah. these figures are, but yeah. I mean, th you yeah. know, there's there's Mercer money and Teal money behind yeah, a lot of these people. Figures, but money. also, when they live stream, yeah. the reason they're all live streaming yeah. is because they have, you know, they I got a thousand people watching that live stream, and every so often someone's dropping fifty bucks. You, they have you can. Donate money while you're watching these live streams, and I've seen them when um, when they came to um, when Red Elephants came up on the store, mm -hmm. and she's talking to her the people in her live stream, and they're saying you know say the 14 words and you know which is the I promise to be a white dude and raise white kids or something you know the yeah. 
whatever that Nazi the slogan. Nazi yeah, yeah. So people on their live stream are going, hey, go into Revolution you got Books. Two people doing a live stream. One right. of them has the camera. In right. It. And people no, watching it are going, hey, I'll give you 50 abortion. bucks if you, you know, if you ask for Mein Kampf, you know, or whatever. And so, I mean, I've watched, uh, I've only done this once because I can't sit through three hours of their live streams, man. But I did it once because I wanted to see how much money they talked about being donated. And in one live stream from Red Elephants, there was like 650, 650 bucks that they mentioned, mm -hmm. you know. So it's, 10 bucks at a time. yeah, you know, and 20 bucks and 30 bucks and, you know, say something awful to someone and I'll give you 40 bucks, you know, yeah. and, they, and then they especially watch like the Patriot Prayer stuff and Tiny Tutos because they know they're, they're going to get in a fight, yeah. you know, they get to see chaos and violence for free and they're like, shit, I'll give 10 bucks to that, you know. Yeah. So, you know, we all like study different parts of this in whatever time we have to, to get to it in this room. Uh, what it, what's your sense of how much is going on nationally with these people? Like, okay, uh, Seattle, Portland, San Francisco, or Berkeley, uh, Los Angeles, right? But, but then it's, you know, it's not big in Tucson, it's not big right. in Phoenix. You know, what's the, how is it spread? How, I mean, how is it, uh, what's the, uh, what's so, the layout nationally? Okay, um, you, I mean, so I, I think, think it's sporadic. You know, you know. I think it's sporadic. I mean, you might know. I think probably Orange County right now probably has the biggest yeah. concentration of hardcore alt-right fascists. Uh, Tony Foreman is from there. A lot of the people who have attacked the store yeah. are from Southern California. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, and, the, and it's, it's the traveling shit show. Like, if you watch, if there's an alt-right then in New York, I'm going to see faces I recognize there every time. It doesn't matter where they go. Yeah. But I, I think, Are you know, there? it really was this thing that grew out of Gamergate. Yeah, yeah. The yeah, alt-right community, of, and it really it. is an online kind of world, and they kind of LARPed and, and kind of came out with their yeah, cosplay yeah. thing. I mean, <laughs> And I think that um, it wasn't successful. They have not thrown a single alt-right event that has not been met with serious opposition. I mean, th is there, there was one event in an uh, MLK Park I mean, there was, there was that a, was uneventful. There was, there was a, but, a right-wing Republican event here with people who are, uh, was it yesterday or the day before, uh, with people who are, you know, friendly with the alt-right. I don't know if it was more alt-right or more right-wing Republicans or where to draw the line exactly. Uh, which, which event was that? There was, there was a couple of Republicans on a speaking tour. And, uh, but was that, you know, what kind of event was that? I don't really know what kind of event it was. I just know it was happening. Uh, you know, I, I, I think that... Um, it was a, you know, the uh, the club, uh, whatever the Republican club. Yeah, yeah. I think Republican. there's a couple yeah, of college Republicans in the college Republicans. They yeah, yeah. The, aren't completely out of the closet, but I think well, that's why some of the stuff is. Yes, Ashton Whitty is trying to make herself famous. Is she still part of the Republicans? She's not technically a student anymore. And, uh, the new president, who replaced the old the old alt right pre president, has uh, denounced Ashton Ashton Whitty recently. For being all right, because yeah. you know. Uh, so that was a. Well, you know, I was at the store today, and Rago mentioned that, and I thought it was an, a really great insight. Is that, you know, she had noticed that. Yeah, they've been at some of the attacks in the stores, the college Republicans, but they kind of step back and let the other people make the asses of themselves and kind of laugh and snide and snark because these people want real political futures. That was what I thought was really insightful about what Rico said. That, like, yeah, they, they look up to Steve Bannon and Jack Abramoff and Ralph Reed and these people. You know, that's what they want. They want to be the next Karl Rove. Yeah, they so they don't want to yell at the patron. At, they love seeing that go down in Revolution books. But, you know, so I think they're scarier. You know? Can I just make a comment? I'm a. I'm going to be honest, I don't have the perfect conclusion, but I've got some observations that make some of you... Um... So I've got a godson who, of all weird-ass ironies, is half black, who was uh, into this shit for a while. 
And he still may be somewhat, but he fortunately got his ass kicked uh, by his employer, and that really shook him up. And um, he's, he's kind of at least mostly changed his tone, and some bits around me. He's a kid, he's like 19. And um, the, the, the thing I've been so impressed with is, is, is the, the, the power and, and, and the quality of the propaganda. It's really good, it's really subtle. He was spouting anti-Semitic shit to me, not even understanding right. what he was saying. Right. You know, and I check him and go, wait, do you understand you know, that that's bullshit, that's Nazi? Oh, well, no, it's not. And I explain it. And you watch one of these eight minute videos, and there's just a couple of things like, sort of just slipped in yep. under the. If you don't know things, it leaks into your consciousness, right. you know? He's a working class kid, he grew up in San Leandro. And, 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 anyway, I, so I, I have gone to these things with him in mind. Trying to talk to, because there's kids that come to this with their Pepe hats, and you know, there's some tough guy they want to try to, whatever, mold themselves to. And I, I want to try to peel some of them off. And I think if there was a more robust, healthy left movement, and there are a lot of people left ideas out there, but we're very scattered. Right. You know, we have not. We have our sectarian job. divisions. Tons and, of right. infighting. Right. And, and there isn't a real clear idea. There's tons of propaganda against us. But a clear idea of like what might a, a, a post-capitalist world look like? It might. It, and, it, anyway, and I don't want to be a critic, but but uh, you know, and probably all of us do as best we can, you know, and, and we have limited resources. But so I, I go with that, and, and and I also I talk to I know some of the people that cover their face, one or two of them, and I try to talk them out of them. Um, don't get sucked into fisticuffs if you can avoid it. You know, try to hang back right. and try to talk to. There's this. It seems to me. To be a big kind of periphery that are showing up for the shit show or the fight, right. and I think a lot of them you can demoralize or maybe even sway. Now, I've got my godson reading socialism on trial now, and he's kind of he's taking his head halfway sure. out of his ass because I can't take the credit. Life sort of shook it, you know, and he had to think, oh wow, and cap, maybe that's a bad idea. <laughs> you know. Well, you, uh, there's a number of things that makes all of that makes me think of. Like, um, for starters, they're, they're motivated by different things, a lot of these people. Um, some of them, they just, I, I, do you remember um, um, uh, when we were standing on that guy that who's, he was, I think he might have been like, you know, Indian, like from India, he was, you know, maybe Pakistani, but he was a Trump hat guy, and he was just grinning ear to ear and walking around and hee <laughs> hee and, and kind of like Loki, the trickster god, just kind of, he, I don't think he gives a shit about Trump's politics. I don't think he gives a shit about socialism or fascism or anything. He just knows, <laughs> this is fun. Everything gets all crazy and I can wear this hat and it'll piss all these guys off and I have this boring fucking life, you know? So there's some of that. And then there's also, um, you know, NAFTA was a disaster. And yeah, it's a disaster. And people don't have jobs. And the American dream is, is bullshit. And now, guess what? White dudes are feeling it. You know? And they don't have, you know, and, and then, you, you know, you get this, this narrative about the broken home and the no fathers. And, you know, there, there's some reality to that. You know, like, there's a mm -hmm. lot of structural problems in our families and and a lot of kids don't have you know we used to just go well just go talk to the pastor and whatever he says accept it and shut up and we did that forever and now we realize well that's not a sustainable answer for the issues that I have but we're not giving them an alternative and then these guys come along you know and look us on the left we're saying well I, there's this 50,000 page volume book I'm gonna need you to read Okay, to get you introductory level ready for this mountain of books I'm going to need you to read, you know? And then these guys come along and go, shit, put on a hat and a flag and let's go party and have a beer. Yay, we're patriots. And they're like, okay. But also you know? they have state power. The president of the United States right? is the biggest troll in the universe. That's right. You know? uh, and and he's, in, <laughs> he's in love and he, and he is the all right. Yep. I mean, uh, if he... Yeah, it's been more than state power. They have money behind them. They have a lot of money. A lot of money, yeah. All these new billionaires from yeah. Silicon Valley, you know, um, and the Tesla Cad and the Teal, and, you know, these guys, these libertarian billionaires. 
that are happy to throw money behind Base Stick Man and his graphic novel and you know, and, and fund Milo's tours, you know, his, his website, Dangerous.com, is bought and paid for by the Mercers, <coughs> you know? Well, so, the, the through and walk people park it, most of the people that were, and we do, because we do, because we have a lot of black folks there, a lot of, and a more immigrant, Hispanic people speaking out against them. Because they were doing a free speech thing, it says, well, then you need to listen to exactly who you're attacking, right? You know, like, we're not racist. It's like, well, then you've got to hear from black people and, you know, people that are across the border and what they got to say. If you, because they have free speech, too. It's like, if you come to people's park, they're going to have free speech, too. You need to hear that. And I think that threw them off. Because they, they face exactly who they're, like, you know, targeting, you know, or, you know, trying to send people again. It's like now you have to face it directly. And we were like, we're going to be peaceful, but we we're kind of like, if they attack us, we're ready to go. But we didn't want to go there. We were going to keep it peaceful, but you know, but they had, they couldn't deal with that. That's one of the things I noticed. The transgender woman is like, I said, you know, the whole church, the, the history of the church has been burning people like you. Uh, it's like, how, how can you? Justify being part of this movement, you know, and I, I was starting to get to her and I'd seen her like said some of the footage later like God, it's the same same woman, huh? <laughs> but I nearly had her appear, you know, it's like it's just how can you say say that? I said read your history. I mean it's <laughs> right. you're, 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 you're with the enemy right now. It's like the, yeah. the brother was talking about the attraction of the all, right? Yeah. To, to people. Yeah. And I mean yeah. I, I'm also, while well, this is going on, I'm, I'm scratching my head and thinking, you know, the past three months things have really changed and mm -hmm. you know, and you know, where's it at now and, and where's it where's it going? And, you know, it, it... So I think, I mean, there's obviously been a serious drop in activity from them. Yeah. I mean, they were organizing all over the place. You know, um, I know Joey is, like, on the forefront of that. Patriot Perry has been out just all over the place, constantly doing rallies. I think he's had, like, two rallies in the last three or four months, total pittered out, you know... He, Traditionalist Workers Party <laughs> that destroyed itself with their infighting and incest and incest. God and you know and then um, you know and then Milo his comment about it's okay to you know have sex with a child and be a mentor for them you know destroyed his career and fired from Breitbart. Yeah, sometimes not all the time. Yeah, you know, it's like a distinction. You know. <clears throat> right. So and 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 man, you look at. We shut them the fuck down here this last year. I mean, there's not one event they had that was a success. Not one. That they can point to and look, we did. They point to April 15th and say we won. That was a success. You don't think that's a fair analysis? No, I think it was just a massive shit show. All day. I, I don't then, think okay, anything was accomplished. But, uh, uh, Aaron, but, but I don't buy that. I've heard that too because I was there and the only time I saw anyone get chased out was when we were in the street sort of um, north of the park. I get my directions a little mixed up. And it was everyone's in the middle of the street. Like, so if the park is here, right, and the high school's here, everyone was kind of up in this block for a long time. Oh, oh, you're talking about April 15th? Yeah. yeah. It, was like, it was like 300 people. It was like, from where I was standing, it was like a Braveheart march. Yeah. The film Braveheart. Yeah, sure. You know, all these guys yeah, running, you know, five or 10 of them sure. had clubs, and I even got video of, of one of them actually clubbing uh, several anarchists to the ground with a big, with a baseball bat. Uh, to, you know, once they, it, I mean, it was part of a thing that you can analyze what happened on that day. There sure. was a whole lot of different stuff that happened. And so, yeah, they got beat down for a while. Well, there was they that point. Got, they got their revenge and they beat some people down. Sure. But I, I mean, I think you, I, I think it's, it's really important to understand what the alt-right is at the same time you know the context and, and I'm thinking about this book 1864 that we feature at, at, on the volunteer at a revolution bookstore okay. and uh, it's about 
how the society was in motion in the year before the Civil War, and I'm not talking about, I'm not trying to say we're headed into the Civil War, but you see all these people following very thin uh, ideological components and, and you know, uh, uh, ganging up and forming like pseudo-military contingents, and, and we talk about the alt-right as kind of a street component, of the of the radical right, the P, the fascism in this country, the uh, how many people voted for Trump? Ten or twenty million? There's like at least twenty five million people, white mostly white people in this country, who support Trump and this fascism, and we can prove it's fascism yeah. in in a, in in a number of different ways, mm -hmm. uh, but. For, you know, and over the past X number of four years, the alt right has killed uh, was it two, three, four hundred people? Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, and people who are are influenced directly and taking part directly in the whole alt right thing. But that's just the first phase, right? And that can die out, and something can happen, and I don't see that that you know. There's going to be a great social movement in the society that's going to beat the alt right back. It's it's going it, it's it's married to the white supremacist root. It is right. you know direct line from slavery to the alt right, right in this country, and and it's and it's it, it's going to keep going somewhere. It's not going to just die out. Although for the past few months. It's been weak. Something else is going to happen. And so, but there's been a fissure there, a significant one, since Charlottesville. You yes. may be aware. It sounds like you follow them. Yeah, yeah. Richard Spencer did a hit piece on Mike Cernovich, and they, they've kind of... They're having very serious divisions. They're having the, the right. ones that are overtly ideologically racist versus the more garden variety, whatever you call it. totally them, true. The civic nationalist, yeah, yeah. the neo... Fascists that aren't overtly racist that will have some minorities in their number. Mm -hmm. They've actually are throwing rocks at each other yep. since Charlotte. And and you know what? And I remember right. they that sure. the exact same shit went down with the neo Nazis in the eighties and nineties. I remember that with the hammer skins and the order and all that stuff. They got a little power and got on Geraldo, and then they didn't know how to handle it. And they had all this infighting, and there was purity tests that they were fighting over, and it's all the same shit that they're doing now. And you know, the whole time, even before Traditionalist Workers Party got brought down, right. you'd go in the forums, and they were having massive wars with each other over how they felt about Matthew Heimbach. Are they on his side, or are they on the Richard Spencer side? And are you in this camp? And I'm just going, have at it, guys, fight, because yeah. it's different than our divisions. We're going to sit down. Thank you, well, thank thank you, you so much, much for coming. Thank you. thank you. Good videos. I'll check out your site. Excellent. I appreciate it. Thank, thank you for you. coming. Uh, but we, we... What was I saying? Huh? What's the divisions in the old right? Yeah, yeah. So our divisions are more like, no, because I think when the revolution happens that we need to mobilize in this way, and then we need to be doing this for the means of production. Like, that's where our divisions come down to. It's like actual ideological semantics and specifics. For them, it's like, well, we didn't hit enough Antifa. We need to hurt more Antifa. We need, you know, you're not racist enough. You know, oh, well, I'm anti, you know, I, I don't like black people, but I'm not anti-Semitic. You know, and, and constantly they're, I'm not this, I'm a um, capitalist, I'm socially capitalistic, but you know, you know, uh, it, they have these long explanations of what their political ideology is. And anytime you try to go, oh, well, you're a libertarian or you're an anti oh, no, 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 no. I'm a <laughs> weird subsect division of this, this nine long, word long thing. And it's like, uh, but, was... but the alt right could like die out completely, and you'd still have this, this, this white supremacist root in the United States. And the 25 million people who still are like oriented, or however many it is, I assume it's like around that number, that are really strongly uh, dedicated to like the kind of thing that Trump's doing right now, but they'd be into the next thing that happened. Like say if there was two 9-11s tomorrow, I mean all those people involved in the alt-right 
and those 25 million white people need to be yeah. bad, man, because the alt-right has opened up this kind of street fight orientation. Mm -hmm. This is you know, one of the things, one of the main aspects of uh, fascism is, is the they right. street, uh, uh, yeah, uh, street right. law. Whatever well, game. Game. Yeah, I mean, they want to be the state, but the thing is, I, what I, I, I get a little bit. They're certain. malicious. They're street. Oh, they're vicious. Street, no, no, I'm they saying they're a street militia. They're, 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 <coughs> they're headed in that direction. Pin, you know, yeah. Trump doesn't have the power that Pinochet has today. The had had over the, the totality of power that Pinochet was able to have right. in his total fascist state. He didn't have the kind of military that Mubarak had in Egypt and that kind of mm -hmm. uh, fascist state. Egypt was a fascist state. Argentina under Pinochet was a fascist state, straight up, uh, by any definition. Any definition calls that fascism. Right. And, you know, the. the it, and this is headed, this is moving in that direction, and the only thing slowing it down is is, is uh, I don't know. So I think it's Trump's two things. Weakness. What do you call it? His his method. Because he's an idiot. <laughs> his, and I don't try. I, I, I don't think know. Trump I, does I, not I, know I, he's a fascist. I'm trying not to. I'm trying not to is. fall into that because because uh, it's not. I don't think it's useful. Uh, I mean, he's, he's dumb. What he's dumb. But no, I, I disagree, Jacques. I think it's very yeah, useful. He's president of the United States. He got Look, I, I, I see it all the time, and I see pundits do this on the news, and they're trying to think, what's Trump's game on it? What, what's his long picture? What's his 3D chess? And I'm going, he doesn't have any. He's an idiot. He just spewed some crap out of his mouth that sounded good in the moment. You know, and there is no long view picture. And, and it's who's in the room with him last? You know, who who um, kissed his ass right? You know, I, so I'll, I'll be flipping. He's listen, a lot of madman theory sure. too that mixes up with that, so you don't really have a good fix on how stupid is he. You know, it's like it's not stupidity isn't the thing. Yeah, I don't know. It's not the governing. It's not what's what's really governing this. I mean, he's got generals. He's got Christian fundamentalists. He's right. his ratings have gone up. Yeah, he's with, in the forties with, with the Christian fundamentalists. This is this is you know another component the Christian fascism Christian fascism in this country. Yeah, I did a whole two hour two and a half hour documentary called uh, American Heresy: The Rise of Theocratic Fascism, yeah. and uh, pissed off a bunch of Christians. <laughs> Uh, is that on your YouTube uh -huh. channel? Oh, I'd like to watch that. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I think the Dominionists are way bigger concern than these clowns, actually. They're a much But they're together. They are and they aren't. I think that's a misunderstanding. They'll I mean, come they together for all the factions yeah. like that in the Civil War, right? right? On both sides, you know, but they you but they unify in and it doesn't have to be war, but they work together on their agendas. You know, yeah. Mike Pence. Mike Pence is one of the numbers. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Talk about stupid. Talk about <laughs> stupid. Like, so oh, he's terrifying. Oh. That's a problem. We've There's spent. Trump if we have Pence, then. Yeah, and I think he would be worse. Yeah, if he is the Christian right. I just think that the, the, the state is too strong at this point, and I can see them going to some kind of too strong for what? Well, see, I think that you, I, maybe some of us, I, I, I have a kind of a different take or the definition on what fascism is. I'm thinking Italy, Germany. I, what went on in Latin America in the 70s is a little bit different. It's, 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 sure. it's a military taking state power. And it might sound They're, 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 they're sure. different. They, yeah, they don't have the mass base. happening in Central America and in South American countries are different things. Pinochet. So I let all of Well, let me actually, yeah, let me say this. I, I, because I wanted to in the very and in the very beginning of the presentation before you got here, I kind of addressed that a little bit. Oh, where, um, so, what I talked about was, I mean, I actually had the dictionary definition of fascism. That's how I was going to start it, and I was like, everybody's heard that. I don't need to tell you that. Um, but I want. But the whole gist of really my talk was like, okay, yes, we have these things that we can point to and we say this is fascist. This is you know authoritarian figure, scapegoating, like these things. But really, what I've come to break it down to, and. I, I wasn't around with Franco and Mussolini and stuff, but I think it really is just the most ignorant and terrified elements of our society 
You have to have the ignorance and the fear, you know? So that now you're just so easily manipulated. Now, you know, um, Yale recently published this amazing study that I have felt was true forever, and now he has some scientific proof of it. But on average, people who are conservative have a larger amygdala. And I just think that this is so telling about, so if you have, that's your fight or flight me mechanism. Some, some of us are studying neuroscience. And so, and, I, and we talk about this a lot on the show, this fight or, this well, inclination. The, uh, so the amygdala is essentially the, it's lizard your original li lizard, lizard brain. brain. It's the yeah. oldest yeah. part of our brain yeah. and it's fight or flight. Yeah. That's yeah. what it is. And then we have the prefrontal cortex that helps us differentiate and find nuance between those two choices. Yeah. That's my opinion. But they have found that People who are conservative, in large percentages, have a larger amygdala. And, and I just think that's so true because I see these people are very afraid of things they don't understand in the world, and they just yeah. want to be told, do this one thing, and it'll be okay. Now, you go home and don't be scared anymore. And we're always going to have that. And then when you throw capitalism on top of that, which exploits that, and, and you know, it's just a huge recipe. So we're always going to come back to this these rises in fascism, I think, but um, it's going to look massively different every time. You know, this is, these, no, Richard Spencer is not some acolyte of Franco. They would hate Richard Spencer, you know what I mean? But he's fascist as fuck. I mean, I can't see Hitler sitting down with Donald Trump and having a conversation and, and respecting him at all. They'd be like, who the fuck is this clown? You know, but he's still fascist, right? I mean, it's just different. And, and they, you know, we mentioned earlier about how it came out of Gamergate. So there's a, that, a lot of online gaming kind of culture that it latched onto, and the, especially the misogynist side of it, you know? So it's indicative of that. So if it could come around again, and then it'll trick us like it did. We didn't understand it. And then people like us had to go, no, 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 this, this is fascism. You know, Pepe, that's, that's not a funny little cartoon. That's fascism. And, and have to get people up to speed again. You know, but if we can just get rid of capitalism, we won't have this problem again. Yeah, there you go. Build a good alternative. Yeah. Build, build a movement that draws. That's right. And that's what, what we encourage people to do. Um, really, it, what we... Uh, the, the bit of preaching we actually do on our channel, we mostly just share information. But we will say, it's, you know, get out with people in your community, and if you see a problem, address it. You know, don't wait for top down someone to come and help things. Start doing these things now. Start realizing the reality that we want, and then show, look, we made it work over here. We have our whole little thing of things that we did here, and why can't we just apply this to the bitch picture? You know, as opposed to waiting, well, they'll never fix it. Well, no, they won't. You know, I mean, you walk by a dude needs a blanket, give him a fucking blanket. Don't vote for someone to give him a blanket. <laughs> you know? So that's, what I, that's how I think we, we stay ahead of this stuff, man. You know, because I can't take down Trump, man. You know, I mean, if I had your help, maybe, but... <laughs>